Welcome to Resilient Living Podcast, a show dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Today is episode 21 and it is stress management in troubling times. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and the background noise is actually my vehicle and we do these podcasts on my work commute. But I've been doing a lot of show notes here on what I think that a lot of people might want to hear or what they need and sometimes what I'm inspired by, by just, you know, the day and stress is definitely one of them that I'm experiencing right now. Uh, but I'm able to, I'm able to curb it and I'm able to curb it through a lot of different uh, things in my life, things that I put forth, uh, living simple, uh, identifying my stresses. What are they? I think a lot of people, we stress out and we get a lot of things that accumulate and they, they all compound up and sometimes we forget about uh, certain stresses. And that's why I look at in my life, money is a big one. Uh, little things like, am I doing the right thing for my kids? Absolutely, am I doing everything that I possibly can? Uh, many, many things that I look at. I mean, some of us stress on you know global warming and all these kind of things. If we really care about the earth we live in and we wonder, are we doing the best? You know, And, and some things we have control of, some things we don't. But it's good to to try to mitigate these things, try to figure out a way to deal with them and to replace them with something. But we won't know until we actually know exactly what is going on. And that's what I want to start off with here is identifying stress causes. And some of them are very small ones. You know, it's like a mosquito that's constantly pecking at you. You know, maybe you don't eat healthy enough and you're looking, well, maybe one day, you know, I'm too busy right now uh, working and making money as uh, one of my favorite cartoons, The Rise of the Guardians, when they asked the Santa Claus character, I think it was Jack Frost says, you know, we, we need to play with these kids. They need, they need some uh, joy. And he says, joy, we're too busy bringing joy to have joy with children. Then he stopped himself and looked, we're all too busy. You know, I just thought that was a cool little uh, excerpt to put in there, especially from these, these children's cartoons, which is supposed to be children's cartoons, but in my book, uh, are very powerful lessons. So the very first thing I think is to get yourself a piece of paper and start keeping notes. Start documenting and writing down all the stresses. Uh, I find a lot of uh, my stresses come from when things aren't uh, organized. Uh, that's probably one of my big ones. So I start writing down a list of to-dos, certain things that I need to uh, uh, organize and fix up. And it's and a lot of these things, are these little ones, are very nice to start taking care of first. You know, you're, uh, I'm in the construction business. I own my own business. I'm an entrepreneur. And every once in a while, I'll let my uh, work truck or my, my work trailer get completely out of control. There's screws and nails and things like that. We dump them in buckets. You know, it's the end of the day. We got to hurry up home and then we never get back to uh, actually putting everything where it belongs. Then when you go to find it, it's all over the place. And that's very stressful. Uh, it happens in my home. I'm sure a lot of you have those type of things as well where, you know, some maybe some of your cookwares and things like that. You go to pull a cup out of the cupboard and, you know, a bunch of stuff falls on you and you're just, ah, <laughs> it just gets on you. But there's a lot of things, I think, too, taxes and, as I said, health, uh, money. One of the things I look at in my life where a saving grace is that I am a business owner, an entrepreneur, so I have control of um, pretty much of how much money I make. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am uh, or what I've, what I've been up to, and I, I call this the alternative lifestyle design, I usually take off three to four months a year, and I'm definitely going to do that this year. Uh, one of my goals was also to have an entire year prepaid. So meaning 2021 was a year I don't think I've mentioned on this show before. Um, it was a goal for many years of mine to, to actually make enough money to prepay in a year in advance. And 2021 is it. I finally made uh, enough money in 2020 to do just that. So these are things that I look at that really alleviate a lot of stress. I think that money, having to go to work, and make the dollar and a lot of people as they say what is it seven out of ten americans are living hand to mouth paycheck to paycheck they barely have maybe a few thousand dollars in the bank and that's that's horrible and there's a lot of things that are going on right now uh, in our lives i think in our world where that leaves us susceptible and open like sitting ducks to a lot of different things uh inflation but how do we mitigate that what, what is the answer to the problems here things i look at is able to is when you're able to uh, stick to budgeting through Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or I use Apple's numbers on my phone I'm able to organize my budgets 
I'm able to organize and figure out, well, how much money do I have? You know, that's what I have down in my notes. We're going to skip forward a little bit here is knowing your numbers, the significance of knowing your numbers. Uh, how much money are you making? How much money are you spending? How much money are things such as ghost expenses, like the tires on your car? You'll never know. You know, maybe you might hit a nail and have a blowout or something. And your tires aren't under insurance anymore. Now you got to buy a new tire. Uh, your roof gets a leak if you're a homeowner. You know, all kinds of different things. You could get sick and miss days off work, and it puts you that further back. So knowing your numbers is very important. I think when we take the significance of that and we're able to uh, um, organize these things, our finances and things like that, and save up for, for rainy days, for big rainy days. Uh, for instance, I don't, not sure if I mentioned, so I've got uh, over a year, I probably have two years in advance of emergency funds saved up for myself. That alleviates a lot of stress. So if I sat and did absolutely nothing, I'd be dead broke. Uh, but I've got, I've got it sitting in the bank. I also have some money for investing. I also have um, uh, money, as I said, pre-made money for all of 2021. Uh, what I do is I take my money, by the way, and I just stack it in places. I put it in different accounts. That way I don't spend it. Uh, never mix your business with your personal. So what I look at is uh, this is the perfect place to get time. And time is where I 100% believe that most people are spinning around in circles, spinning around so hard because of the things they have to go through, all the hoops and things like that. And a lot of it has to do with money. So when we're able to get this under control, we're able to get more time and less stress. And what happens when an individual has more time and less stress and they're able to sit down, they're able to get a, a vantage point. And I think that's what's going on in a lot of people's lives through all these stress, all these little things that we're saying that we need to identify, note, note down, put them down, and uh, uh, categorize them and then start coming up with some mitigation plans for them. But when you're in the whirlwind and you're working a job, especially those that, jobs that people doing stuff that they absolutely hate, that they don't like, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, sometimes I'm in the same boat, even though I speak of all this freedom I have. Sometimes I, I sell a lot of work and, I, and I'm just running. I don't, I don't have to run. Uh, <laughs> I guess, how, how can I explain this? <clears throat> Sometimes I have deadlines. Sometimes I have time that I, I want to get things done. So I'll actually just run, run. I'll stay, steal from Peter to pay Paul, meaning that that's why my Tupperwares are not uh, organized in my home. And I go to grab one and everything goes everywhere. Uh, some of my lids are missing and things like that. Some of my street, my, my truck is a complete wreck. That's why I can't find some of my, my parts and things like that because I ended up working late. So I do have control of it to, to that extent. But I think once to get back on track here is once people get a vantage point and you're able to design your life to where you can get that time, now you can start coming up with more plans and things because this lifestyle design that we live in right now, in my opinion, things keep stacking on and they keep stacking and there's no time really and energy, especially when you're stressed and you're doing things that you don't like. So it takes organization of your life, hence that's what we call the alternative lifestyle design, to be able to gain control of your finances and things and, and all the other little things to be able to design your, your, your life, to run your, your kitchen like a restaurant, you know, to run your, your garden and your, your, your life basically like a business so that everything starts to flow instead of uh, uh, working against you. So the, one of the biggest things I think uh, in my life as far as why I'm able to think of all these things and incorporate these things into my life is because I live a very simple life. Uh, this is simple lifestyle design. This is where uh, a lot of you, I, I'm not sure if you follow uh, what I've been doing, if you haven't heard the, the uh, very first episodes, the, the intro. I live in a tiny house, aka travel trailer, full time in RV, uh, an RV park. So my overhead, I pay a third of rent of what most people pay. Uh, over here, believe it or not, it's like $2,500 to $3,000 to $4,000 a month. There's nothing under like $2,000 a month. You're very lucky, unless you're living in a weird, a bad part of town and you got a, like a one bedroom apartment. Uh, but because of the simple life that I've chosen to live and the way I've designed my life, that's what gives me the freedom. And that's when sometimes I stress out on all the work and all the things going on. But I, I just realized today is that unlike most people, if I decide to leave work early because I, I'm very stressed out and I need some alone, you know, some time for myself to figure things out and work on things, I've got that where a lot of people I think can't. So that's where the alternative lifestyle design I think comes in handy for a lot of people to take consideration that maybe the things that you're, the lifestyle you're living is way uh, 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 above your wage, right? You're not acting your wage as they got, the fellow uh, Dave Ramsey likes to say. I like to say, act below your wage. 
So just because you're making enough doesn't mean you should spend it all. You should start saving uh, your money. So a lot of it comes around money, but I think a lot of it's simplicity too, like a large house. I can give you, for instance, you know, my, my home is only 250 square feet. It's just me and my two daughters. Uh, but I'm able to clean and maintain that thing within like four four hours. You know, my chores and everything are done. Granted, if I keep up on my dishes and things like that, but it gives me that ability to uh, not have much to do. Whereas I think most people would have to come home, mow your lawn, you know, rake up the leaves, and you got to vacuum the carpets, and you're cleaning this really large house, and it ends up that you are working uh, not just for money, but for your own energy and your time, which is is money can't buy you time. You're spending all that on things that don't, don't even make you happy and that maybe it would make you happy if you had a different uh, uh, sort of lifestyle if you had something different going on for yourself like you were making more money or do, you were able to work from home and things like that so I don't have all the answers for people but I do know if you feel stuck <clears throat> simplicity in everything that you do if you're able to harness that down that makes life a lot easier for you to do such things as I say just take the day off Maybe take the week off. Maybe do like what I do. Take three to four months off. Uh, in fact, when I do these mini retirements, such as I call them, uh, I'm actually eager and can't wait to get to work because I conjure up all these things. Remember, we were talking about a vantage point. But what happens is I'm not occupied with money, bills, all of these things. They're already taken care of. Now what I'm preoccupied is how am I going to make next year better? Or is there something new that I can do? Or what's bothering in my life? How can I change that? What can I implement? And I'll sit there and brood on these things, you know, and come up with exciting things that my life, life for, for each individual to me should be getting better and better every single year, every month. If we're not something, you know, if it's not doing that for you, I think there's something wrong and we definitely need to change things. So a lot of this comes through planning. I'm going to move forward here. designing plans and understanding your plans. A lot of times I get stressed out and I start worrying like this, this recession that we're having. It did affect me, these, these uh, uh, supply chain disruptions. There was places where I couldn't get materials to uh, start new jobs and things like that. Price hikes went up. We have a crazy inflation going on right now. Uh, as I told you guys, I, I had savings, right? And when I look at my savings, I'd say about 15 at least percent of my savings have gone down the uh, toilet, right? That's no longer worth it. If I had, uh, you know, make even numbers, I had $100,000 in the bank. It's now probably only worth about 80000 we just lost twenty thousand dollars because I didn't invest that money, uh, but I need it for my emergency fund so that I can invest. But I know the difference now. I know the numbers, and all I have to do is add in another fifteen thousand dollars into that bank account, and then we're back to where we were. Now I have one hundred and fifteen thousand, and we're back at a hundred thousand. <laughs> they've they've devalued the dollar, so things like that have stressed me out. And uh, as long as I keep up on my numbers, as I say, and I have a plan. Uh, I also have plans where I look at my life where I want to go. What do I want to do? I, I want to make a residual, many residual incomes and get off the uh, owning a construction business like I do right now and get to something where it's making me money uh, from anywhere in the world, wherever I can go. Um, and I'm working on many, many different things and, I'm, and I've got the time to be able to do those uh, because of my, the simplicity of my life. But those plans take a, a lot of uh, uh, notes. They take a lot of thinking a lot of dedication and a lot of discipline and uh, you know what it also takes is the is the guts to go out and to try to stab holes in it's the way I say stab holes in, in the uh, bucket of ideas see if you can make that thing leak ask other people questions if they can see something where maybe this is not marketable or not valuable or whatever it is that you're doing there that way uh, you can figure out where you can make the best of your plan and you've thought about all the weak points all the weak links and you can make repairs as necessary so that you can get into, out of whatever you want to get out of and into whatever you do want to get into. Now we can't never plan and think of everything, but by doing these things, by making these lists and sticking to them, I think that it helps us out to, uh, to make the best educated, wisest decision instead of just going in blindly. Because I think I see a lot of things like that. People want to relocate right now to different states, uh, not knowing that you know some places have some really huge natural disasters. You know, how much does it rain? There's all kinds of things. I'm thinking about, um, excuse me, checking out South Carolina. And what I'm finding is that there's so many different things, mosquitoes and there's some places get 80 inches of rain. Some places I didn't know get like crazy frost, like down to 11, 10 degrees, you know, into the teens. Uh, so there's a lot of things to take in consideration. I don't want to live here in California because the price is too high. 
Well, I move over to some place like South Carolina, but I just, I'm going to get paid half of what I get paid here. So I'm actually in the same boat. Things like that can take in consideration and really figure out, make a re really good educated decision so that you can, uh, uh, like I said, at least mitigate a lot of the potential problems. Um, the thing is, is remembering to look at your plan. Uh, as I said, I look at my accounts. I look at how much money I have in, in my accounts. I look at how much jobs I have sold. And when I start to stress out, uh, I look at these things and go, oh, okay, uh, we're going to be okay. But sometimes you lose head of that because you get stuck in that whirlwind. And that's been the inspiration of this exact uh, uh, dialogue right now is that uh, the, how the whirlwind gets you even when you do have plans. So you need to make sure that you understand your plans. Make sure that you've put them uh, on paper, written them down in some place. I put everything on my phone. Uh, and so all these plans, as I say, about like moving to a different state and starting new businesses, I slowly start to uh, use uh, creative visualization and things like that to design my, my ideas, my plans. Uh, I've got a new solar, power, power, uh, solar panel cleaning business, for instance. And what I did is I made myself a bunch of flyers. And it cost me like $45, I think, for like, I don't know, 500 flyers. Hung some on some doors and tried to talk to people to see some numbers. Out of all of those, those flyers, if I get a 1% turner, uh, turnaround where people are interested, I'll go ahead and buy the equipment. So I'm not wasting a lot of money buying, getting myself into a new business, not knowing what's going to happen. So that's, uh, I've been pretty stressed out. I need to take some time off. Uh, I don't feel like I really gave you guys the best show here today. So I'm not even going to ask for subscribers or anything like that. But I do, what I do hope is that you guys uh, got something off of this show as far as stress management. And I can't say enough of how, uh, how these things really uh, mess around with our lives. I mean, even me right now, I'm fumbling with my words. Uh, things are going pretty crazy here and I've need that I'm takes I'm gonna take that time off and I'm going to see what I can do about all these problems that I have right now I'm gonna see what I can do to make things better uh, but I have that potential like that's the message I wanted to get out is I have the leverage to be able to take off today and maybe even tomorrow if I so choose to um, yeah guys I hope that this message finds you well uh, as I always say well, you guys can check this out on uh, uh, Instagram. We have a Resilient Living podcast there. I do put some posts there. If you guys want to message me, if there's something particularly you guys want to hear, it's uh, resilientlpodcast at gmail.com. And all of these things are in the description up above uh, or below. So you guys can uh, uh, get those links and you can message me. Also, um, well, as I always say, go out there and have yourself a near-life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. And human up, my friends.